Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to ARA's webinar Wednesday. Uh, I am Sri Rao, your moderator for today's webinar titled Advancing Transportation Systems Management and Operations or TSMO for Transportation Agencies. Uh, next slide, please. First, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, if you have an issue with sound and you're using your computer speakers, uh, please dial in using your phone. Uh, if you have any other issue, please use the chat button to send a message to the host um, as shown on the screen right there on the top. Next slide, please. We encourage you to ask questions and those will be addressed at the end of today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please click on the Q&A button to send your question and we will address these in the Q&A session uh, directly after the presentation. Uh, please do not use the chat box for questions. Please use the Q&A button as shown on the screen. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, if you'd like to view the presentation in full screen, um, if you look at the top of your screen, at the top of your webinar setting, you can click on the down arrow, um, highlight view, and then choose fit to viewer, and that should enable you to see the presentation on your uh, full screen. Um, just a reminder um, that if you would like to receive uh, the one-hour PDH certificates that we usually send with these webinars, you must attend the full one-hour webinar, and more information on these PDA certificates and how to get them will be provided at the end of the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Now, I'd like to introduce our presenter, Ms. Erin Flanagan. Erin joined Applied Research Associates ARA as a principal for transportation operations and safety. Uh, in this role, she supports clients nationwide in the advancement of transportation systems management and operations, or TSMO, um, safety, emerging technologies, and infrastructure. Um, she has over two decades of transportation planning and design experience uh, and has a broad range of expertise in the areas of advanced transportation research, analysis, and emerging technology projects. Uh, and specifically in the last 12 years, she's concentrated on TSMO and emerging, emerging technology program uh, development. Uh, among her many contributions, uh, she has led TSMO planning and emerging technology efforts in Utah, Tennessee, Michigan, Maryland, New York City, and Kansas, uh, as well as research projects on numerous federal highway, Administration, Transportation Research Board, NCHRP, ASHTO, and the second Strategic Highway Research Program, SHARP-2 efforts. Erin um, got her Bachelor's of Civil Engineering from Purdue University and her Master's of Science from the University of Texas at Austin. Erin um, is uh, relatively new to our ARA team, and as you can see, she brings to ARA and our clients a rock-solid resume and we are very fortunate to have her join ARA. Um, if you are like Aaron and looking for a change in your career, you can join ARA too, and I will talk about that towards the end of this uh, webinar. And so, so without any further ado, I'd like to hand this over to Aaron. Aaron. Thank you, Sheik. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, great. I am very happy to be here today to talk to you all about TISMO. Forty years ago, if you were to have joined a State Department of Transportation, a state DOT, as a new employee, your career would have been about building the interstate system, plans, specs, estimates, designs, quantities, and building things. And then as urban areas grew and traffic congestion became a problem, beltways needed more lanes. So you stayed busy as that highway designer, adding more lanes for the increase of traffic. You would complete a project only have resulting more congestion. DOTs figured out that we couldn't build our way out of congestion and technology entered the picture. Technologies like cameras and sensors to monitor the traffic and variable message signs and traveler information systems to let the traveler know what is happening on the roadway. DOTs shifted to managing and operating the system. 
New employees at state DOTs today not only build roads, but manage the transportation system using high-tech equipment and other operational strategies. So the topic of today's webinar is Transportation Systems Management and Operations, TISMO. It's a very broad term. Transportation Systems Management and Operations is broadly defined for strategies and applications for managing our transportation network. For the past decade, I've been working with state DOTs in defining and advancing their TISMO programs, and this webinar will provide you with a greater understanding of TISMO and how states are implementing TISMO programs. I know we have a lot of local agencies, toll authorities, and transit agencies on the webinar today, and although I'll step through this material from the lens of a state DOT, those concepts are transferable to all transportation services and agencies. I'll provide a bit of history and then go into more detail on various strategies and projects that are defined in TISMO programs. We will then step through how agencies are measuring and improving their TISMO programs and then cover a few case studies of how agencies are advancing their TISMO programs. First, let me go through a few of the acronyms I'll be using a lot today. TISMO, Transportation Systems Management and Operations. Management and Operations, so it's not to be confused with O&M, Operations and Maintenance. Maintenance activities such as snow plowing and fixing potholes. CMM is another acronym and it stands for the Capability Maturity Model. It's a framework we use in our TISMO world and I'll go through that and ITS, Intelligent Transportation Systems. To set the context of TISMO, it helps to look at the basic organizational structure of a DOT. Traditionally, DOTs have divisions of design, planning, maintenance and construction, and then there are area offices, regions that are the boots on the ground. The traffic group is generally housed in the design or the engineering division. The responsibilities and activity within the, transport or the traffic group have expanded as technologies have advanced. Traffic is mainly managed out of a traffic management center, a TMC, for both highways and arterial signal systems. On highways, we use cameras, sensors, and dynamic message signs, which feed into the TMCs. Along arterials, we have advanced traffic signal systems where intersection signals are managed out of a TMC. Travelers now provide crowdsourced data to the system by reporting real-time conditions on apps such as Waze, and this information flows into TMC operations. All of this information brings greater situational awareness of the transportation networks to not only the DOTs, but the travelers. The Michigan Department of Transportation deployed one of the first projects in the nation back in 1957, where they used closed circuit television cameras to study freeway traffic. The system was just outside of Detroit and included 14 CCTV cameras, 21 sets of overhead lane signals and speed signs and speed sensors along the state route. Fast forward 60 plus years and most all urban areas have some form of a traffic management center. The figure on the right shows one of just four of the regional TMCs in Tennessee. TDOT operates over 1,500 ITS devices across the state. And in 2021, TDOT detected and managed over 115,000 incidences. And by responding to those incidents, be it a disabled vehicle, debris on the roadway, or crash on the system, by clearing the roadway more quickly, normal operations resume and congestion is decreased. The DOT is operating and managing the system. As technologies have advanced, DOTs now recognize that managing and operating the transportation network connects to every aspect of the DOT's daily working. The planners have to include operations in the earliest stages of project development. Funding has to be available to maintain the technology with their software upgrades and technology updates. Administration functions 
need to account for training and hiring a workforce that is broader than the traditional civil engineer or road builder and includes data scientists and computer scientists and field technicians equipped to maintain those emerging technologies. DOT regional offices then service the equipment in the field. Everyone at the DOT has a role in operating and managing the system. The National Academies of Sciences Second Strategic Highway Research Program recognized the need to research this expansion of technology as DOTs incorporated all of the technology on their system. In operating the system, the research investigated how to think about operations earlier in the process. We call this linking planning and operations. Planning generally focuses on the long-term needs of the program and defines the capital investments that would be made. Operations focused on the real-time needs of the system, like managing traffic conditions and addressing safety concerns in real time. The Federal Highway Administration, FHWA, then furthered the research with workshops and other resources that have helped agencies understand the value of focusing on TISMO. This pie chart starts the conversation as to how agencies can begin to look at traffic congestion and safety and focus their resources. The SHARP-2 research defined congestion in six generalized buckets. 40% of congestion is due to bottlenecks, where a four-lane section of roadway necks down to three lanes, causing a backup. 25% of all congestion is due to crashes, and 15% of congestion is due to bad weather impacts on the roadway. 10% of congestion is due to work zones, and the remaining 10% is a combination of poorly timed signals and special event traffic, like a Sunday afternoon football game causing congestion. As you can see, over 60% of the congestion can be managed, thereby reduced, by focusing efforts on these sources of congestion. 40% of the congestion caused by bottlenecks will require added capacity, adding another travel lane. But we can improve the system by better managing how we design our road or work zones and respond to weather events. By focusing on that 60% of the pie chart, we can really impact traffic congestion, increasing both our mobility and safety on the system. The term TISMO was initially coined in the 2012 MAP 21 legislation. This federal definition is quite formal, noting that TISMO is about integration, strategies, and performance of the system. A system which is multimodal, cars, trucks, and buses, cross-jurisdictional, things should operate the same even if we drive across a state line, and preserving capacity to be able to use what we have instead of building additional lanes, which are very expensive. A more real-life definition of TISMO is just to use strategies like greater collaboration with partners and applications, technologies in the TMC using message boards to get information to travelers so that agencies can manage and operate the transportation network in its most efficient ways so that traffic ingestion is reduced and safety is increased. The term TISMO has been reinforced in the newly signed bilateral infrastructure law with the additional consideration of natural infrastructure in our transportation system, infrastructure that restores natural ecological processes. I see this additional language as expanding TISMO to include resiliency strategies, such as hardening the transportation infrastructure against flooding and natural disasters preventing major disruptions to our transportation system during those, during those events. So let's dig into some of the strategies and applications of TISMO. TISMO uses strategies to address the sources of congestion we saw in that pie chart by combining emerging technologies and greater collaborative efforts by DOTs and first responders. We detect, 
respond to and address a crash or incident more quickly. Using traffic incident management systems, improving safety by clearing crashes more quickly, allowing traffic to resume to normal operations. Using truck parking management systems, using technology to broadcast parking availability to truckers so that they don't park on the shoulder when they run out of service or hours and cause those safety issues by parking on the shoulder of the roadway. Road weather management systems use sensors and integrated strategies to optimize how winter weather is cleared from the roadways and roadways are safer for travelers. And smart work zone systems keep not only the workers but also the travelers safer by monitoring speeds and cues in work zones. Other TISMO strategies that help address congestion include integrated corridor management systems that assess where capacity is available, be it on the interstate, a parallel arterial, or on a transit line, so that corridor operations are optimized to reduce congestion and improve travel time reliability. ICM showcases the integrated strategies by coordinating operations of traffic signals, often maintained at a local level, with interstate operations maintained at a state level, so that a coordinated system is available to the traveler. Traffic signal coordination and altering timings that allow for transit priority improve travel times on the arterial system. And special event management strategies are tailored to managing traffic during a World Cup or a concert event. Crowdsource data, like Waze, helps respond to real-time conditions, real-time congestion, and safety issues with that greater situational awareness. So again, TISMO is very broadly defined and encompasses many strategies and applications. Additional areas include active traffic and demand management, using congestion pricing to get travelers to change what time they commute into town along a congested roadway by increasing the price during peak travel periods. Road weather management systems can use real-time data, allowing a DOT to optimize where they send their plows and how much salt is deployed, saving money for DOTs. TISMO programs are also preparing for the autonomous vehicle and the data that will be provided about the system, further optimizing the ability to manage safety and congestion. Oftentimes, TISMO strategies can be quickly implemented and relatively low cost when compared to adding a lane of freeway. There are several examples of agencies that have analyzed congested locations on the interstate and determined that just by restriping the lane, they're able to reduce the backup enough so that an expensive capacity project, adding a lane, can be pushed off. Other low cost approaches are having a pullout area in a high crash zone to clear an incident from the roadway more quickly. In Virginia, which is where I live, there are congested corridors that allow for travelers to travelers to travel on a shoulder during peak traffic periods. This allows for greater throughput without the expense of adding travel lanes. There are also areas where buses are allowed to travel on the shoulder during congested periods, encouraging mass transit ridership and providing greater travel time reliability for those buses. Why is it important that state DOTs pay attention to TISMO programs? TISMO benefits include efficient commute, that travel time reliability. You know how much time to allow for a trip. For instance, optimally trying traffic lights help vehicles move more smoothly through intersections and harmonized traffic lights can reduce travel time by eight to 20%. Safer work zones using technology to safely manage a work zone helps decrease the number of work zone crashes, injuries, and deaths. Easier, easier to use traveler information, where DOT websites can provide 24-7 traffic and incident information. And fewer wasted, wasted gallons of gas. When travelers are not burning fuel idling in congestion, 
This enhances livability and sustainability of our community. The Shark 2 research jump-started the discussion about how to better manage and operate the transportation system. It's a given that agencies already did many of the things that are defined as TISMO. They were managing and operating the system, but there was room to improve. TISMO was not a formalized program. The roles and responsibilities were fragmented, and there was limited sustainable funding in place. The SHARP-2 research brought forward a process to assess maturity of TISMO programs at agencies. What we mean is a process to help agencies get better at what they were already doing. The research tailored a framework brought over from the IT and software world and adapted it to the transportation community. The capability maturity model, CMM, which I'll describe in the next few slides, brings together decision makers, groups of about 20 or 30 people in an agency, and steps through the strengths and weaknesses of various processes. Then weighs the maturity level by defined criteria that was determined in the research. Then the group of 20 to 30 decision makers have brought forward the weaknesses, the actions, you have that immediate concurrence on how to move the agency forward how to become more mature in managing and operating the system. The capability maturity model provides a framework for agencies to step through distinct areas on how they manage and operate the system. This framework breaks out the components of an effective TISMO program into six dimensions. The first dimension are business processes. Is TISMO included in planning documents, and in programs. How is TISMO identified for funding? The second dimension is systems and technology. How is technology chosen? How is technology procured? Performance measurement is the third dimension. What is measured? What is reported? And are there dashboards for tracking? Collaboration is a foundational dimension, and it's talks to how stakeholders are engaged, how often, and is there documentation about stakeholder engagement and collaborative efforts. Organization and staffing is another foundational dimension where we assess how agencies train staff on TISMO elements. When folks retire, how is knowledge transferred? And then the agency culture. Do decision makers support and advance TISMO progress? Each dimension builds on the others, but in assessing each dimension individually, incremental improvements are quickly revealed. In other words, the CMM dimensions provide insights on ways to improve internal agency processes that can help chip away at bigger issues. The process focuses on each dimension and identifies the strengths and the weaknesses in how that dimension operates in the agency. For instance, a weakness under performance measures might be an agency used to do after action reports, but it was Bob who arranged those and since Bob retired, they don't happen anymore. A doable action, start doing after action meetings again, can advance the TISMO program and all the participants, those 20 to 30 decision makers in the CMM assessment agree it's a good thing to do. This seemingly small step can greatly improve the processes. This is the value of the CMM assessment. After we talk through the strengths and the weaknesses of each dimension, we then assign a level of maturity established through criteria on what the maturity level is. Maturity is defined in four levels. Level one being performed is when things are ad hoc and champion driven. From there, moving up the levels of maturity goes all the way to a level four where things are fully measured with formal, documented, and structured programs. People change and the program keeps moving forward at level four. 
I want to note that there's nothing wrong with being a level one maturity. Some programs are very successful at a level one. There's just risk when things change. For example, let's say there's a major construction project going on and Sarah, the project manager, sees an opportunity to add a traffic camera. She knows this area could benefit from having a camera installed. She finds the funding for the camera and gets it into the project, albeit late in the game. This is an example of a success because TISMO advances, but displays that an ad hoc program, that level one maturity, where the champion, Sarah, just knowing it would work, found money and made it happen. If Sarah wasn't TISMO aware, that opportunity may have been missed. Advancing to a level two maturity would require that processes be in place so that if new technology is needed in an area, the early scoping of that project would I have identified the location that camera was needed and provided the funding to have it as part of the project. The CMM self-assessment determines a level of maturity for each dimension independently. Then focusing on the lowest ranked dimension is how the agency moves their program along fastest. When an agency participates in the CMM self-assessment, they define how to move forward and why it's important to improve their TISMO program. The CMM results provide the business case for why it is good to advance. All agencies have TISMO programs. It's just a matter of how formalized the programs are. Are they institutionalized or ad hoc? How formal and or organized are they? Is there sustainable funding streams and resources? And is the, mode, is the program measured and effective? That TISMO business case provides concurrence on missions and the mission and goals of the program. It provides consistent talking points because TISMO is so broad, consistently knowing what the agency is committed to is important. It provides, the business case provides engagement and awareness building, and it also aligns and integrates TISMO to all existing efforts. And TISMO complements infrastructure. It's not a competition of add a lane or include TISMO. It's a combination of both. Success is found when TISMO is included early in the planning process, the concept phase. And having a robust TISMO program helps when staff turnover happens or major events occur. Consistent talking points allow for greater institutionalization of TISMO. For agencies that have gone through the CMM, they've reported their overall agency TISMO readiness has improved by treating TISMO as one of the core agency programs. Integrating TISMO into existing processes has helped them advance their programs, as well as developing an agency culture that supports and values TISMO. Let's all staff learn their connection to managing and operating the system. Communicating the value of TISMO and making that business case for TISMO investment was critical to advancing TISMO programs within those states that have completed the process. They've also found that including travel time reliability in their measuring of performance helps broadcast the value of TISMO. They've also been developing their workforce capability, realizing how important that is and their TISMO program has helped enhance their collaboration with first responders and local agencies. Early steps an agency can take to increase their focus on TISMO include doing one of these CMM assessments, and then from there, developing a TISMO program plan. And I've got some information on that on later slides. They need to understand their business case for doing TISMO, that persuasive argument of why TISMO is important. And they need to build awareness to implement their program. Those are the early steps. As agencies advance their TISMO program, 
they then have a greater mindset for TISMO advancement and have institutionalized TISMO. They have training programs in place that advocate for TISMO, and they can link TISMO to broader program areas such as asset management and corridor management. Agencies that have advanced their TISMO programs have also been able to identify sustainable funding for advancing their TISMO program. A continued focus and advancement of TISMO is seen in the recent transportation legislation, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, where they re, again reinforced the definition of TISMO, but more importantly, TISMO elements are clearly linked to funding opportunities in the legislation, such as CMAX funding and two new programs the Congestion Relief Program and the Carbon Reduction Program both detail TISMO solutions as part of availability for funding. The legislation also opens the door to funding technology programs in several grant areas, such as the SMART Program, the ATTAIN Program, and the PROTECT. FHWA or USDOT also likes their acronyms. The PROTECT grant opportunity is especially interesting because it focuses on resiliency and links TISMO progress to that. This next section will provide a few national good practice examples on how TISMO programs have succeeded. I'll just throw a reminder out there again that if you have questions, put them in the Q&A box and we'll get to those here in a bit. So a success story is seen in Michigan. The Michigan Department of Transportation deployed an active traffic management system to address congestion and travel time reliability on US 23. The system included variable speed limits, dynamic lane control and shoulder use, and a cue warning system. The benefits logged in this program included an increase in travel time reliability in the corridor of 56% and speeds that increased 19 miles per hour. Sometimes TISMO success is the result of a small decision that makes a big impact. I like this example of a TISMO win because UDOT is realizing the payoff of what they saw as potentially a risky decision made decades ago when they began including conduit for fiber optics on projects. Slowly over time, they were able to build out a comprehensive fiber network that supported their ITS devices, cameras and signs, even in the rural area, because they required or included conduit as part of most all roadway projects. UDOT now has a comprehensive statewide network of either fiber or empty conduit that's ready and they understood the value of that future need for managing and operating their system, and this early decision has paid off well for the DOT. Sometimes TISMO success is the result of foundational relationships built over time and are in place when needed. In May of 2021, Tennessee's Department of Transportation had to close a major bridge crossing in Memphis due to a crack that was found in a steel beam on the bridge. This was a major impact to travel. TDOT leveraged its existing ITS assets to mitigate the effects of the bridge closure. They did this by evaluating and modeling travel times on detour routes to assess traffic patterns, then adjusted lane configurations and access points that optimized throughput. They altered lane striping to improve a choke point that reduced the travel delays and through their relationships with local traffic agencies facilitated rerouting and retime signals on those detour routes. In December of 2017, the Washington, uh, in Washington State, an Amtrak train derailed, causing a rail car to fall onto Interstate I-5 hitting several passenger cars and shutting down the freeway. I-5 southbound was ultimately blocked for over 57 hours and detour routes needed to be quickly established in an area that didn't have a lot of options. 
through an existing TISMO working group, the DOT was able to work with a military facility that was adjacent to the crash site and routed traffic through that facility. If those working relationships did not exist, it would have taken a very long time to work that detour through, but it was a huge success that came together very quickly. In the past six or seven years, state DOTs have developed TISMO program plans. These plans formalize their program and raise the awareness of TISMO in their agencies. A TISMO program plan defines the vision and the goals of the state's TISMO program so that everyone is singing from the same sheet of music. The states generally begin the process by conducting a CMM assessment so that there's clarity in where they stand in terms of their maturity across the six dimensions. From there, actions are determined that address the weak areas. But more than that, more than just defining the actions, the program plan will then drill into how those actions can be carried out, what funding or other resources are needed, who will lead in accomplishing the action, what stakeholders will support the work, what timeline is needed to accomplish the work, and how will we know when the action has been accomplished. One thing that I've learned in developing program plans with states is that across the six dimensions, the CMM assessment can identify a lot of areas to advance, but the program plan should also help clarify the priorities. If there are too many things to do, nothing gets done. So the program plan helps prioritize and focuses the agency on the four or five actions that can really advance the program as a whole. The process seems to work. I've worked with states that have completed their program plan four or five years back. They see the value and they reassess their CMM capabilities so that they can update their maturity levels and refocus on what those next steps are for continuous improvement. Looking to the future of TISMO, emerging areas will be a continued investment in upgrading traffic management systems. Both traffic signals at the roadside and updating traffic management centers with so many advancements in display technologies, current centers can gain a lot of space by updating their video walls. AASHTO and other organizations are putting a lot of focus on workforce training programs bridging the gap between academic programs and the world, world technology deployment needs. Another emerging area is the growth of both the electronic or the electric vehicle and the autonomous vehicle and the impact that will have on states managing and operating the system. Just imagine the changes to roadside assistance needed for electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles versus the traditional automobile that runs out of gas. States are also seeing how artificial intelligence can help in managing the system. I think this is a growth area with a lot of potential. Making sure our transportation systems are resilient is a continued emphasis area, as evident in Florida this past month, where FDOT was able to address a causeway breach in record time. Complete streets is another emerging area that can fall within the TISMO discussion. Complete streets is a concept that ensures that bicyclists and pedestrians have access and are a key consideration in transportation solutions. This is a long list, and there's lots of very good things to look forward to. Today's DOT employees engage in a much broader approach to the transportation solutions versus 40 years ago. Their objectives are cross-cutting, technology-driven, and collaborative. The future holds great promise for safety and mobility of the transportation network by deploying technologies, both on the infrastructure and in the vehicle, and using integrated strategies to advance the operations of the system. It's an exciting time to work in the transportation community, and I hope you have a better understanding of TISMO. Thank you, and I'm gonna pass it back to Shri for discussion now. Thank you very much, Erin. Um, 
again to all the participants who are attending today's webinar. If you have any questions, please begin submitting those. Uh, we've talked about that a couple of times. Uh, the uh, the Q&A button is at the top of your screen. And please submit those now. And Aaron will answer them as many, answer as many as possible in the time we have available uh, while I talk about the upcoming webinars. Uh, next slide, please. So we hope you enjoyed today's presentation and that you will join ARA for future webinars. On November 30th, 2022, uh, Ahmad, Dr. Ahmad Al Hassan will talk about risk based asset management for geotechnical features or geotechnical asset management. And then a couple of weeks later, on December 14, 2022, um, Dr. Tanzila Tabassum uh, will talk about experimental and numerical performance of cement bonded geomaterials uh, that are stabilized with plastic waste. Um, we do have many more exciting topics and presenters in the works for 2023, so please watch your email for updates or visit the Webinar Wednesday webpage, uh, www.ara.com uh, backslash webinars. Uh, next slide, please. So if, I, if anybody has, like I said, if anybody has any questions, please uh, include that in the chat. We have a few questions, Aaron, and I'm just going to uh, read them out. Um, so the first question is, uh, why should states focus on TSMO now? Okay, great. That's a, that's a good question. Um, there are probably a couple of reasons. One is that attention to having uh, continuous improvement, recognizing that most state agencies are doing TSMO, and I think that's an easy um, rebuttal to formalizing the program, this is something that we already do. Yes, that is something that they already do, and it is, it's just about doing it with more purpose, with continued improvement, continuous improvement. And then another reason would be when I look at that transportation legislation, there, there's a lot of money available um, to make improvements to managing and operating the system. Um, and so states are encouraged to make the best um, of, of that legislation to implement technology and the, the transportation legislation will help you quickly move forward. All right, thank you, Erin. Um, a question from Katie, which is also something that I uh, relate to. So there's people who are attending these webinars who may be involved in other aspects uh, of DOT. And uh, this question is, how does TSMO fit in the greater context uh, of DOT operations? An another great, great question. Um, and that was um, why it's important to look at that traditional DOT organization where it used to be technologies managing the traffic management center all fell in that traffic group. But as I've worked through, or as I've worked through several program plans with a number of state agencies, oftentimes the, the, the voila moment is when they recognize, when state DOTs recognize that TISMO really connects to every role in the agency. So when I think of the greater context of DOT operations, if the planners don't truly understand the mission and the goals of the TISMO program, they need to have that greater understanding so that when projects are first conceptualized or being planned or being scoped, that they too are helping advance the TISMO mission and goals because they're aware that, oh, there's this corridor study and it hasn't included technology, I need to step up and, and play a role in advancing TISMO. Another great example that came up in a workshop that I was managing was we were trying to find the connection to everyone's role at the state DOT. And someone from the right-of-way group was like, where's my connection? That was a real stumper to me for a while, and someone else in the crowd, actually, someone else at the workshop, brought forward the solution of why the right-of-way department needs to be 
vested in the advancing TISMO, and that was that oftentimes, especially with a technology project, all that's needed is a, a minor corner clip to secure some right-of-way so that they can design a, or implement a, a pole for a camera, and that right-of-way needed is very small, but it's very important. And so the right-of-way group needs to see their connection to advancing TISMO as a whole. Yes, it was only 100 square feet of right-of-way that they needed to take, but it was critical to the success of managing and operating the system. And so we were able to find that connection. So everyone within a DOT can play a role in advancing TISMO, and that's an important awareness process that needs to happen with state DOTs. That's a great answer, Erin. I like that right away example. Um, the next question is from Megan, and I'm paraphrasing this question. Um, you talked about CMM and, uh, and talked about some of the dimensions. Uh, what are the challenges or what kind of challenges or what are the dimensions that DOTs have the most challenges in terms of advancing um, CMM? Okay, great, yeah. Um, again, I've, I've conducted a lot of CMM assessment workshops, so I've had a lot of experience in hearing agencies scoring their level of maturity. Uh, generally, um, the systems and technology is the strongest dimension within state DOTs, how they procure and manage their technologies are very, um, very well formulated and mature in state in the agencies. The, the dimensions that seem to rank lower, um, and it's not that it's a grade card that they're doing bad, it's just against the other dimensions, uh, the performance measurement dimension was always an area that state felt there was room to improve. They did measure their performance, uh, but then did they do what was needed to actually improve those, uh, those elements that they measured, that they see that there's travel time reliability issues along this corridor, they're measuring it, they know it, but they ha have they done anything about it? Um, and then also with dashboarding, are they reporting their performance either internally or to the traveling public? So that was always a dimension that we were able to spend a lot of time discussing those strengths and the weaknesses and figuring out ways to incrementally improve performance management, performance metrics in order to advance TISMO programs. All right, thank you. Um, I, I think we're, uh, we just have one more question and I'm just gonna read that out and we may um, end the webinar at that point in time. Uh, if anybody, like I said, if anybody has any questions, please uh, include that in the Q&A portion and we definitely have enough time to get to that. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about uh, workshops or training. Can you talk a little bit more about what kind of resources, especially in terms of technology transfer that are available to learn more about Sismo? Oh, sure, great, great question. And there are a number of really good resources out there. Uh, first, in, in the front of my mind is within AASHTO. Um, there's an operations center of excellence where it's a center of excellence fully focused on advancing TISMO. And it's, it can be found within the AASHTO website or just by um, Googling the National Operations Center of Excellence. And they, um, they publish case studies on successes, they have webinar series, um, and they're continually promoting the advancement of TISMO. The Federal Highway Administration has a very robust website um, with a lot of fact sheets and case studies on what various agencies have done to promote TISMO programs. Um, and then also, and I know with uh, Tennessee, um, the Iowa Department of Transportation, Ohio's Department of Transportation, as part of their program plans, uh, those states, and I'm sure there are others, um, they put 
forward a very public facing uh, video on what their TISMO programs are. And um, that's a very uh, quick and easy way to get a lighthearted message about TISMO just by going to those websites and seeing their TISMO program plan video. That's great, Erin. Thank you. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for participating in the webinar and for your questions. Uh, we have some time, and uh, if you did not get your question in, uh, or if you would like, if you have some new questions you have in mind after we end the webinar, um, Aaron has agreed to answer questions for the next 24 hours via email. Uh, we just ask that you please make sure your questions are not consulting questions and just uh, questions pertinent to the webinar uh, and the presentation today. Um, next slide, please. On behalf of ARA, again, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Today's presentation is being recorded, and a link will be made available on the ARA webinar Wednesday website uh, sometime early next week. We will also send a PDA certificate to all participants verified by our attendance report as present for the, present for the full webinar. A copy of today's presentation will also be included when we send the PDA certificate. Uh, please allow three weeks to receive your certificate. Uh, next slide, please. ARA is always looking for great people to join our team. I kind of mentioned it early when I introduced Aaron. Uh, if you're interested in employment opportunities with ARA's transportation and infrastructure offices, uh, please send a brief resume and contact information to www.joinara at ARA.com. Again, that's www, that stands for Webinar Wednesday, join, join ARA at ARA.com. Um, thank you again for joining today, and we hope you join us after the Thanksgiving break on November 30th for our next Webinar Wednesday, which will be Risk-Based Asset Management for Geotechnical Features, or GCAM, Geotechnical Asset Management, by Dr. Ahmad al -Hassan. Thank you again, and have a great rest of the afternoon. Thanks, Sri. It's been fun.